Nicole with Polar Bears International and today I'm talking to polar bear scientists and sitting next to me is Michelle. Michelle can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? Yeah, hi there guys. Um, my name is Michelle Biancon and I'm a recent master's graduate student and uh, I'm looking specifically at polar bear genetics in Hudson Bay. Now to give you a better idea of where that is, I've brought a little map here and you can see Hudson Bay is composed of four subpopulations that are labeled Western Hudson Bay, Fox Basin, Davis Strait, and Southern Hudson Bay. Now, the reason why we study polar bear genetics is actually to see whether or not genetic differentiation in polar bears corresponds to those boundary lines that I just showed you earlier here on that map. And those boundary lines really guide management. So whether or not those differences genetically correspond to these boundary lines is a question that I wanted to answer in my project. So like is each, um, you're looking at all these different subpopulations and are they distinct from each other or are they all kind of mixed but us humans have just gone in and put lines in it. That's kind of exactly. what you're looking at. Okay, so interesting. Those lines were formed based on market capture studies, also radio, collar, and satellite telemetry data. Also, return of harvest tags. So not really much influence of genetics in those decisions of creating these lines. Okay. And how do we find out the genetics? Like, what kind of samples are we using to even figure this out? That's a great question. Uh, it all starts in the field. So uh, our research group, we go out and do a census of Western Hudson Bay, uh, based out of Churchill, two times a year. So in the spring and in the fall. And during the census, we capture bears and tag them. If it's a bear that we haven't uh, identified in the past, then we take a few measurements and also acquire a few samples, some of which include uh, little ear tags. So here is an example of what an ear tag is. And this is derived from um, putting a little ear tag in, which I also have an example of, which you can see in the corner here. Uh, what we do is put that little earring, I guess, and it's got a unique set of numbers that identifies that bear. And in the process, you get the little ear tag that I showed right. you You kind of do like almost a little hole punch in the ear and yeah. what comes out. That skin is actually really important. So we, it's good to take the bears and it's also good to keep the skin from it because it can tell us a lot. Yeah, exactly. So once we get that sample, that ear tissue that I just showed you, we put that in the freezer because we've got to preserve that DNA and make sure that it doesn't decay. Biologists have really funny freezers of all sorts of good stuff. <laughs> hey, snow works for a lot of things if you're out there in the yep. spring, so uh -huh. that's a natural freezer. So once we have that sample, we bring it back here into the lab. And in the lab, I do a few different things. I need to extract the DNA first. Mm -hmm. So I take a little tiny portion of this the tissue and I mix it all up smash it all up to get access to that DNA and start to extract it. Then we run a few experiments, um, one of which is to actually amplify that DNA, and then we actually sequence that DNA, and we can find out that unique code for this particular bear. So in this case, mm -hmm. X33541 would have very special um, genetic code that we can compare to the other bears in Hudson Bay, in this case, Western Hudson Bay, and see how different they are to one another genetically. Very cool stuff. So what kind of uh, things have you found in your research or where do you see you know, the field of genetics moving forward? Because it's be becoming more and more important in wildlife biology, including polar bear studies. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Uh, I definitely think that uh, it's going to be going beyond Hudson Bay for sure. Mm -hmm. We've got a PhD student actually looking at all of Canada. So looking to see more differences, seeing whether or not there are differences genetically across um, the 13 subpopulations in Canada. Great. Sounds like we're going to be learning a lot more from the genetic makeup of polar bears and it might even influence how we manage them and make for better conservation measures. Yeah, I hope so. Very <laughs> cool. Well, thank you for talking to us today, You're Michelle. Welcome. If any of you have questions for Michelle about polar bear genetics or anything you heard about, please email us at questions at pbears.org and we'll pass your questions on to Michelle and maybe we can even do a follow-up later on in the year. Cool. So thank you so much, no and problem. thanks everyone for watching. Bye. Bye.